Thank God for His holy presence. Amen. Amen. Well, I don't do long, long teaching, but I want to give you some things. And I'd like to pray for you. But I am going to ask you to keep this room right, please. Amen. I think if you got something that you need to talk about, bless you. Thanks for coming tonight. There's a coffee shop down the street, dude. Amen. <laughs> I know that sounds mean of me, but I want this presence because I've been in war for people this week. Amen. Yeah. And some of them are here tonight. Thank you, Jesus. And I want to give you something. So if you and if you got something to say to somebody else, praise the Lord, man. <laughs> <laughs> These are big doors. <laughs> and uh, enjoy yourself. But <laughs> this room got to be right. Is that yeah. mean? I'm mean. Oh, I know it. But I, so there's some people here tonight that need a miracle. Amen. And I'm going to war with a war against the enemy with them on their behalf Hallelujah. to help them get it. Hallelujah. And I know that don't sound right, you know. Pastor Jay, he would say it nicer. <laughs> but I don't have a nice on me. Second Kings, <laughs> Second Kings 4, let's do verse 1. I do set first set Kings a lot. But this is really on me tonight. Eric, I had you and your wife on me today so heavy. I'm so glad you're here. Prayed for you throughout the day. God took me away to see Jada this week. I've seen some things this week. Some of your names I won't get right, but um, the message will be right. Amen. 2 Kings 4, verse 1. The wife of a man from the company of prophets cried out to Elisha, Your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that he revered the Lord. But now his creditors are coming to take my two boys as his slaves. And Elisha replied to her, how can I help you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? Your servant has nothing there at all, she said, except a small jar of oil. Elisha said, go around and ask all your neighbors for empty jars. And don't ask for just a few. I love the spirit of prophecy. You've got to be willing to be an idiot All right. to get something great from God. Amen. You've got to be willing to look like a fool Amen. to get your miracle. Because what he's doing in the process is killing your pride. Amen. When you get done, there ain't no pride left. Because they're like, man, this dude has lost his mind. <laughs> Like Goo Goo for Goo Goo Puffs, and then your miracle hits. Man, now you're the grand poo ball prophecy. <laughs> Verse 4 Then go inside and shut the door behind you and your sons. Pour oil into the jars, and as each one is filled, put to one side. So she left him and shut the door behind her and her sons. See, once she got the word, she didn't need the man. We got the word of the living God. Right. They brought the jars to her and she kept pouring. Right. When all the jars were full, she said to her son, bring me another one. But he replied, there's not a jar left. And the oil stopped flowing. Right. She went and told the man of God, which she went and told the man of God, and he said, go sell the oil to pay your debts and you and your son can live on what's left. Man, this is awesome. <laughs> her husband has died. That's not the awesome part. The awesome part is he was a covenant man. Amen. And he had a covenant with God. Amen. And the prophet, hallelujah, didn't have anything for her to hand her tangibly, but he had something in the spirit. That's it. Amen. You know, when you get this in the spirit, right. as I say many nights, most of this is caught, not taught. Right. You catch it in the spirit. Some of my friends that are smart, have the hardest time with the things of God. Amen. Thankfully, I have not had that problem. Amen. I have the SAT scores to prove it. To but our covenant man, a covenant woman, the covenant is still alive even after a man died. His family was still to be taken care of by a word from the Lord. A generational covenant. I hear a lot of people talk about generational curses. I'd like to talk to you about a generational blessing. Amen. Amen. Where somebody prayed for you. Amen. I come from a long line of people that don't have blessing. But I had an uncle, John, 
who taught me to swim by picking me up by the ears, I'll never forget this, <laughs> throw me into a pool. And uh, I didn't go see him ever again. <laughs> but I did learn to swim that day. <laughs> oh, you laugh about it now, Tracy. <laughs> and um, so anyways, he, um, he had made an invention. He worked for Carnation Milk. And he made an invention on this can where you could pop this can open easily. Mm. And he died of a heart attack. Yeah. And then he never got the patent rights. Mm. And one day I was praying in the spirit. And I, whether I was in heaven or I was wherever I was, I was not in this earth. There was no Dairy Queen to be found. <laughs> and there were people, there were, there were mantles and looked like jackets, anointings that looked like coats, and angels held them like this, waiting for someone like a tailor-made jacket that fits your family tree. And I walked in this place, and there was a chest. It was filled with money, and it had can openers in it. <laughs> and I say, what have I got here? And uh, whether this was angel or someone that was I usually don't tell this crazy stuff until after I get the offering. But I, I, what is this? This is your Uncle John's reward that is still alive for you. Amen. That some of you in your family, my grandmother is a descendant, they're Earps, descendant of Wyatt Earp. And so on my mother's side, and they're all mean and I think all those ladies had mustaches, just like it. <laughs> and, um, and I thought about all the lineage, where it could be a curse, but thanks be to God for Galatians chapter 3. The curse is everyone who hung on a tree. Right. The curse has been taken care yeah. of, and you still carry the blessing. Right. That someone in your family created all yes. those years ago. Someone, and it's like the angels are holding up a jacket of your blessing. Right. Just wait for you to slide. Oh, man, that fits perfect. <laughs> the, Lord, the prophet asked this lady when she told him about her trouble, she says, they're coming to take my boys. They're going to take the harvesters. Now, the prophet's the one who's put these people in this situation because he's prophesied no rain there. And it don't matter how many harvesters you've got if there's no field to harvest. Right. Right. So the prophet, she says, no, my husband was a man of God with you. Can't you do something? And she, he says, tell me before she can even answer. This is a true Jew. This is a true. They, ask, they answer a question with another question. <laughs> right here. And he's going to bring the word of the Lord. This is the spirit of the Father. Tell me, what can I do for you? Yeah. And then before she could say anything, he says, what do you have in your house? What can you invest into this miracle? Come on. I watched Jesus do this too. Right. Jesus tells these cats, they've been fishing all night. And the Bible says, when they woke up, Jesus had fish on the fire. Mm -hmm. He told them, bring some of your fish. He didn't need their fish. He already had fish. He wanted them to be part of the miracle. Because there's got to be an investment first. Yes. Right. You have got to learn that it's not the size of your investment. Right. It is the size of your heart when you're investing. Is what God's given you to do. Yes. You might be called, Lord, I don't have any money, but I'm called to pray for them people. Mm -hmm. I'm called to do something great. What have you got in your house? You've got to find something to invest. Right. Now, I've given away guitars. I've given away watches and diamond rings. I don't wear that stuff anyway, man. Some cat gave me a two-carat diamond ring. What in the world is my... They call me Shrek. What are you going to do with a two-carat diamond ring? I just gave it to a shelter. And I figured they'd sell it and pay off their building or something. You did? I am not in this to get rich. Right, right. But if you wanted to make me rich tonight, you spell million, M-I-L-L-I-O-N. <laughs> you have to, Larry. 
You have to have something for God to invest in. You have to have something to invest and something for God to invest in. She says, I don't have anything, but I got a little oil. That's right. I don't got no food to use the oil to cook with. I don't got a lamp to use the oil to burn. But I got this little bit of oil. Right. The prophet says, oh man, that's all you need. That's right. If you got a little bit, I know the God who's got the rest. Amen. Amen. Right. <laughs> I'm some nights when I'm doing the shelters, I'll still take an offering. And they look at me like, you're going to do an offering here? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> These people are broke. And you're not going to get any different until you learn to give. Right. Some nights I'll get a guitar pick. One night I got a hair pick. I wish I had an afro. Yeah. I would have came with hair, just like West Love. I have it. They rocked up in there. <laughs> oh, I get a bottle cap, you know, 12 cents. And, the, and then I try to teach them. If you don't have anything to give, get you a piece of paper. And write on it, if I had to give, I would give. And walk up to this offering. Wow. And make an investment. Yes. Amen. Right. You say, where is that in the Bible? I'm showing you right here. Make an investment. You know how many nights I walk up, how many Sunday mornings? I've been on the road for three weeks and I come in here and I, there's nothing to give, but I get an envelope. All right. <laughs> so then my envelope's are counting with nothing in it. That's B O B. I want to get in the act of giving. I want to get in the act of giving. I want to get in the act of giving. I want to get in the act of giving because God knows if I got it, I'll give it. If I got it, I'll give it. If I got it, I'll get it. If I got it, I'll give it. I, Danny, I believe that the Lord is showing me get more, more guitars leaving your hands. I believe the Lord is showing me right this moment, all eyes on Jesus, that the Father is going to bless back to you with a treasure trove. You have started a cyclical event, says the Lord. There are guitars and instruments are going to come through your hands. Some of these are mandolins. This other is a steel guitar. This other is a bass. And then these are guitars. And God says they're going to go through your hands. You're going to be like a, a revolving door of instruments. You're going to raise an army of musicians, Dan. And I tell you, in the name of Jesus... The Lord is going to give back to you and put the instruments in your hands you've always wanted. Because once you've got out of your hands what you loved, He's going to give you what He loves. And in the name of Jesus, there's a fresh right on you. And God's going to write this through you. So, dude, if you've got to empty out the house, and I don't know how many there are, but I believe from what the Lord's showing me, there's a bunch going through your hands. God says some people are going to come to you and say, would you take this guitar and you're going to know exactly who it goes to? God says that you're going to have one put away somewhere. I forgot all about this one. i got to give this to someone so someone will come from another state and you'll say, I've got to invest this. Brother, you have opened up the heart of God through your giving. Amen. And in the name of Jesus. Man, I tell you, the heart of God, when He starts seeing that you're willing to get rid of what He gave you to get rid of, some people are hoarders. They hang, they hang on to everything. And great guitar players, they have, well, this one has this sound, and that one has this sound, and the other one has this other sound. And it's not hoarding. They use it for a different thing. You know me. I beat on mine until hell gives up and God sends the next one. This is, it's a hunk of wood to me. It's the, my nicest hunk of wood, but it's a hunk of wood. It was a hunk of, hunk of burning wood. All right. It was sent for me to do a work in the gospel. Right. And you can't hang on to anything. Yes. One time, hallelujah. It's one time, one time, it's funny because I was about to tell a story about a horn. Um, one time someone gave me a brand new Escalade, a Cadillac Escalade. And um, I really, I loved that vehicle. I had hit a deer and uh, totaled my car, and because I'm always driving from somewhere. And this man said, I need a word from God. I said, dude, I'm laid up in a hotel. My head's got this big knot on it. And um, I just am asking you to wait till tomorrow. 
well, where are you? And I told him where I was, and he says, I'll be right there. Not what I wanted to hear, you know what I mean? Just give me a break, dude. And so I, uh, I, says, uh, I says, all right. So he comes and picks me up. He wants to talk the whole way back. I'm outside Columbus, and I just don't have anything to say. I said, if you'll let me sleep tonight, because I'm pretty sure I have a concussion. But if you'll let me sleep tonight, I'm going to get with you tomorrow for the word of the Lord. And so he's at my house early, like the crack of dawn. It's going to be 10 a.m., right? And he's banging, Bobby, I need a word from the Lord. I get up to early. And so, and, and so he I says, come in. I give him this word. He runs in the office, and he makes a couple phone calls. And, and, he, and he says, all right, come on. We're going to go on a ride. I says, dude, I'm tired, man. He says, well, the Lord told me to go buy you a car today. Right. And mine's laying in about 30 pieces. And I'm like, yes, yes. And I got this knot on my head. We go to the Cadillac dealership. And by this time, I think they're going to pump me. You know what I mean? Like, they're going to come out from behind the car. Ah! <laughs> Some walk around like this. You know, try to with me, you know. I'll bless you, you know. And so I'm out there looking at these used cars. He goes, no, no, no. We're going to buy you a new car. We'll just go in there. We've made hundreds of thousands of dollars in the work you did. Now you go in there and pick out the one you want. So I rolled up on a black Escalade. And I started laughing. And he looked at me and he says, are you sure you don't want that one that's like four feet longer, you know? I'm like, my house isn't that big. <laughs> and they, I was there when they wrote the check. I was so embarrassed that I had something so nice. They used to park it at Walmart and have them come and pick me up, you know what I mean? <laughs> to take me to the shelter. About two years went by and that business had a problem and went under and they asked for that vehicle back. Wow. And their heart was broken to do it. And it was how they came to me and said, Bobby, uh, you don't have to because it's yours, but we're in trouble. And I was in Canada in a meeting on a reservation and there's like one phone. And I said, all right, man, I'll be home in three weeks unless you need it today. <laughs> he goes, we need it today. Wow. And I just felt like this is all God's stuff. Yes, amen. Yeah. He sends it to me for two, I drove an Escalade for two years. Peace. <laughs> That's two more years of my dad dead or his dad. Mm -hmm. wow. So let, don't let it go. There's nothing that I hold on to in this world. Come on, yes, That's good. I can't, hold, I don't own anything. It's all the Lord's. Right. Amen. He can call me to give it right now. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. So one time the dope man gave me a Rolex down on Emerson Avenue. <laughs> the cat got saved and gave me a Rolex. Boom! -boo. <laughs> Heavier than this bottle of water. <laughs> hey guys, how are you doing? <laughs> like an Amish <laughs> tool. <laughs> it's like this. <laughs> no, I can't do that. And I was up in a meeting. And the Lord points this boy out and he says, that boy's going to get in a mess with his life. And I never prophesy say those things. He says, you give him that watch to remind him, I've always got time. Oh, right. wow. So I pull off that Rolex. It's like the second night I had it on. You know, I can't cheat nothing, man. I don't have money a lot of times to give, you know. So I give away my car or guitars or watches. <laughs> And so I, I laid this on him. He goes, no, no, man. No, no, son. This is, son's not the word for me either. <laughs> no, son. This is a Rolex. I'm like, shh, they will rob you. <laughs> These are barely Christians. <laughs> and he ended up in jail. I went through all kinds of mess. And I ended up back down in that inner city preaching. And he came to me, and now he's taller than me. He was just a kid, man, then. And he says, man, I remember that. You always, he said, God always had time for me. And I'm preaching the gospel on the streets now. I'm out of prison. And that never left me. He said, I was in prison for all those years. And I was, remember that God said he had time for me. You got to have something to invest. Yes. I don't give away stuff that's broke. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. A lot of times people think, well, they're going to go get a new one, so they'll give me the broken one. You know? I'm like, oh, thank you. 
you have any chewed gum? <laughs> Used socks or anything? Old haberdashery? You know, you gotta put yourself in the place for a miracle, bro. And I gotta give you something that cost me something. Amen. Right. Are you with me tonight? Amen. So with God, you know, this woman, she's got oil. She's got one ingredient, but she needs several more. But with God, all you need is one thing. You got faith, you can move them out. Man, with God, you just need hallelujah. Come on, focus in here with me. Hallelujah. I feel a cloud. Thank you, Lord. With our God, all you need is a place for Him to move and have faith that He's going to work it out. You've got to be ready for your miracle, even if you go borrow empty jars. I thought this was great. The same, go get you some empty jars. And He says, don't ask for just a few. Go get something that you know your little bit of oil can't fill up. Right. Yes. Right. Man, get you some empty jars. Get you some places where you need a miracle. Right. And don't just get a few. Mm. So I've headed off with this dude named Chad. This dude is messed up. You, when I bring him to you, you're going to be so glad I'm here and not him. <laughs> He's times 12 goofy. And I hit it off with this cat. And um, he used to own a Domino's Pizza and two crack houses. I, I, was, I was like, okay. And, um, and now he owns two snow cone machines and um, two bounce houses. And they just roll into the inner city, throw up the bounce houses, and start making snow cone machines that after our first encounter, I'm not allowed to run. <laughs> and I thought, this is awesome. Let's get this cat to bring his snow cone machines and houses to Muncie. All right. And let's yes. set up down here and yes. preach the gospel and play some music. And let's pray for some people. Let's get some empty jars. Right. Right. Let's get some people whose lives are Amen. totally empty. Amen. Amen. Let's not set it on the church parking lot. Let's go in front of the bad house. Come on. Right. Yes. Let's get down on the, in the corner there. How there's enough cops in this place. We ought to have some protection. Right. <laughs> Lord, I have never seen more five more in my life than this place. I'll stay in here for a minute, but there's too many police in this place. <laughs> it, ain't the, it ain't the people that have trouble that worry me. So, but I'm sure all your cops, police officers are big people. <laughs> This neighborhood's so broke that when she, it's famine. So everybody had an empty jar. Right. Wow. Yeah. I'm telling you, Muncie, God's setting you up for a right. miracle. Hallelujah. Because there's a bunch of empty jars yes. in your region. Amen. Amen. They've been talking about you like we're one big empty jar. Yes. But glory to God, He needs an empty jar to fill. Amen. Will you yes. be his empty jar? Yes. Everybody had an empty jar. That's all that my God needs. You've got to be <laughs> foolish enough to bring him your empty jar. Yes. I was preaching my first revival. I was 14 years old. And here, all the way. <laughs> and I was in Newcomers Town, Ohio. And I was staying with this cat. My brother had just been killed. I was a mess and a kid. And I um, was preaching the gospel. I had been 13, about a year after my brother said 13 or so. And I met this kid who was trying to teach me the guitar. And I stayed with him and his mom. And I never heard anybody pray like his mother would pray. Oh, God! I mean, there was no early morning. Yes, Lord. He left me beside still water. These were poor folk that needed the richness of God. Yes. The yes. God that owns the cattle on a thousand right. hills. Yeah. That we never run out of steaks or milkshakes. Amen. <laughs> and then she would pray and we would get together. I'm like, I can't let this granny out pray me. And then we would pray. And I like to think this is probably where I birthed my prayer of life 40 years ago. Seeking the face of God. And one yes. day we went to the table. She had water poured. She was praising God. Woo! Glory, glory, glory. There was a big 
uh, things set out like it looked like she was had a big turkey coming. The big silver platters. There was bowls set out. I thought, what in the world? I don't smell nothing. We went in and sat down at this table and they joined hands to pray. I just washed them, you know what I mean? And so I got a sneak of wet wipe. And so she were at the table and yeah. You know, the water's parting, you know, and <laughs> the oh, thank you for this meal. I'm like, Miss Edna has lost her mind tonight. <laughs> Lord, we believe you for the miracle hand of God. Her son's crying, and I'm confused. <laughs> I'm a fat man in a revival. I needed it. Somebody throw me a Twinkie. And, uh, man, I'm in the name of Jesus. She's like, come on, pray in tongues. I didn't, you know, like, pray it to Yes, ma'am. I shot my cup of cup You know, I'm going to get to light it up, man, because she's going to, you know, keep my teeth. Is, and um, she's praying, I oh, thank you, Lord, for this ham. I thank you, Lord. for She's naming stuff. And I'm like, she's done gone go goofy. We, we used to build a lot of model airplanes when I was a kid. So I thought maybe she's done gotten a glue or something because she is loopy here. And then, and then she said, hallelujah. She takes a drink of water. We're looking at each other. I've never seen anything like this. She never told us there wasn't nothing to eat. Knock at the back door. Somebody's got this big thing of soup. We brought it in, put it on the head. Thank you, Lord, for soup. She started filling up soup. Balls. Front door. Miss Edna, God told me to bring us buckets. Plural of fried chicken. <laughs> oh, there's a God. Yeah, right. Oh, thank you, Lord, for this chicken. Here comes somebody with a ham. She puts it on that big platter. There's green beans. There's Brussels sprouts. <laughs> 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 even got into that meal. And there's <laughs> And we're greasing, and we get done, and she's making coffee. She says, do you want dessert? <laughs> Let's get it on. <laughs> Miss Edna! Here come a carrot cake. Now, I'll fight you over a carrot cake. Oh, yeah. I'll war with you over a cheese cake. <laughs> you get it on your forehead, your tongue, and slap your brain. <laughs> Her faith moved me. Right. She didn't have anything but empty bowls. Baby. Mercy. And empty bowls is all God needs That's to right. get a full bowl. That's yeah. right. If you got a hole, and it starts raining. You got a reservoir. That's right. <laughs> the deficit in your life is not as bad once the Lord starts filling it up. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Amen. I look like an idiot bringing up an offering that's got nothing in it. I was at the Joe Louis Arena, gone now, up in Detroit, and uh, I was the youth pastor at a church in that area. And we were raising money for a missions trip. And I needed like $30,000. And um, I only had 10. And Bishop Jakes was preaching. How many of you know T.D. Jakes? Mm -hmm. right. And Jakes was, he was getting it on that night. <laughs> I mean, ah! it was awesome. Man. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. And, uh, and, uh, uh, that's a fearful look, isn't it? When Kelsey comes walking out of the aisle. It's like the Lord has come. He's found me out. Amen. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I do it too. I'm walking in the hallway. She comes walking down. I just, dump, I just jump in the basket. I don't even got pee. I just jump in there. Wait it out. Wait it out. The discerminator. <laughs> and I'm in this offer, and then I go up there and and I'm going to give. And then he says, why doesn't everybody come down here and give? And the Joe's, you know, there's 20,000, 30,000 people. There's probably 15 in there. 1,000 people in there. And on the Spirit of the Lord told me, we don't have enough money for this, for this trip. We're taking hundreds of kids. We're going to build this big place. We only have $10,000, which, you know, $10,000 is a lot of money. Yeah. But we need 30. So I... I tell the guys, I said, what do you think while the Spirit of the Lord is here? 
hours. I said, what do you think about giving this $10,000 in this offering tonight? We can't take the trip anyway. Why don't we trust God and see what God will do? Well, now, nah, brother, this really isn't your money to give. I said, I just need a quorum. I need three out of the four of you. So I'll count yours as a no. What about you other guys? <laughs> and so I wrote the check. And I was like, oh, my God, what am I going to do? And I got two faith sisters. One was in front of me with this big hat. And one was behind me. And they were shouting the whole way. And they had change in their hands. I could, they would drop a pen. Ooh, I'm going to get my miracle! And I was so, like, upside down because I'm going to give everybody's money away. But being around them right. lifted my faith. Yes. Right. And by the time I got down there, because I was up in the rafters, and by the time I got down there, the Spirit of the Lord had straightened me out because of these two women of faith. Come on. Right. Yes. I got my attitude right. Yes. We made this offering right. And when I put the offering in the basket, in the plate there, it's the largest check I ever wrote, and it wasn't even my money. And so I'll be fired tomorrow, I'm sure. And so, I didn't really like the job. And so, I just, in the name of Jesus, and I heard one word from God, sis, and it was champion. Mm. I went, yes, I'm a champion. And as clear as day, I could hear the Holy Spirit say, no, you're not a champion. <laughs> I mean, that was the tone and everything. I'm a champion. <laughs> Here I come to save the day. And it was like, he was like, you are an idiot. <laughs> you are a champion out of ten. So I go up there and they, they said, they said, well, did God say anything to you? I said, I got one word. What was it? Champion. And I go, I think. He goes, you are not a champion. I'm the same thing. I go back home. I got to tell the senior pastor the next day that I gave all this money away. <laughs> I don't do well with a lot of them anyway. So, but I just knew I heard from God. And I was one of the pastors. It was mine to do as the Lord said. But I knew they would not be happy. And I'm praying over this word champion, 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 champion. In the spirit of the Lord, I get in the car. Have you ever, ever, any of you ever done this? You drive somewhere, you feel the Lord taking you somewhere, and you go this way, you go that way. I go around the back of this building, and I feel the Lord wants me to go in this building. And it's heavy security. And this guy takes the trash out, and I go running in. All right. And it, this is a mess already. I'm going to jail today. I'm just a kid, but I'm going to jail. I'm probably 19 or 20 at this time. I've already bounced out of Bible college for the first time. And, um, I'm, and I'm serving up there. And I walk in this place and security cameras turn on me. And I look down in the mat. It says champion. Wow. And I'm at Champion Spark Plugs in Toledo, Ohio. And this old man with a crooked long finger comes down the stairs. Yeah! Come up here! I'm calling the police! And I'm crying, you know, because I haven't been in jail in weeks. But I'm and I'm like, you know, man, hold on a second. God said, oh, don't you start that with me. You're trespassing, blah, blah, blah. He sits me in his office. And, and it's just palatial, this office. And he's, and I'm saying, sir, please wait before he's got security in there. We're calling the police. And I said, sir, God sent me. He says, you know, my daughter, is that crooked finger was like the JFK bullet. It goes like this, you know. And he says, you, my, I have a daughter just like you. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> daughter like me? I'm a, I'm a man, sir. I'm a male, <laughs> sir. No, she believes everything. God's telling her this and God's telling her that. And he tells me her name. And she goes to my church. Wow. And here, this is Stranahan the owner of Champion Spark Plugs, but his daughter has a different name because she's married. Amen. I didn't know she had this money. I'd be at her house instead of his office. <laughs> he says, what do you think God told you to do here today? I said, I don't know. I just gave away all our money last night. Ha! Ah, you sound just like my daughter! <laughs> See, he's getting an agreement with me. All I got is an empty jar. That's all I got. What are you getting ready to do? I said, we're taking hundreds of kids. 
we're going to go down to, uh, you know, it's when we were doing Paraguay, and I would do uh, Cape Santanango in Guatemala. I did for, for decades. And, and we're going to go, and, and we're going to minister, and we're going to build homes, we're going to build, uh, what do you say, schools for the kids. $10,000 there. I can build 10 schools. Do you know what I mean? I mean, and he said, well, why would you give all your money away? I said, well, he said, let me guess. God told you. I said, God told you. He said, well, why would you give it away? I said, because I needed 30 or 35,000 and only had 10. He goes, that makes no sense at all. He's hung up the phone by now. I haven't, the cops haven't called yet. I said, sir, God sent me here today. Do you know why God sent me here? Are you having the nerve to ask me for money? <laughs> I got that nerve. <laughs> I got that. We have not because? We have not. Sometimes God will put you in front of somebody that you present a need. Right. That man wrote me a check for $35,000 wow. that day. Amen. Not me, but to the church. And I went out of there, and the pastor, just before cell phones, because I'm sure it had been blowing mine up, I went to see him. <laughs> Bob, I heard you gave all our money. I'm standing there with this check. Like God just filled my empty jar. Amen. And God just made a way where there was no right. way. Amen. And man, I shut the door. I love verse 4. He tells her, go inside, take that little bit of oil, get all the empty jars, and shut your door. So it's just you and the people that believe that God can do the miracle. Amen. Sometimes that's just you. Right. Eric, sometimes it's just you. Jada, I saw you this week as I prayed for you. I love Macy, just precious. Destiny, I love these girls. We're up here praying and seeking God. But Jada, I saw you touch the heart of God. It's not that you girls don't. I'm just telling you what I saw. But I saw you touching the heart of God. I saw a revival coming off of you this week. I would tell you, Fane, I would tell you in the youth group, Zion, I would get this girl next to me. Brother, I'd get a hold of that girl. I'd get praying with that girl yes, right there. Amen. I'd, I'd take... Half the time that I throw basketballs in the gym on Wednesday night after class, mm -hmm. and I would come up here and I'd get in this altar with this girl yes. and get some of that fire she's got. Not that you don't have it. Not that you don't have it. She's got something on her right now Amen. that is sent for heaven for right now. Amen. And I'm telling you, I've seen you under the glory. I've seen the power of God on you. I see the glory all over you. I've seen you under the presence. I've seen you come and pray with me. Brothers and sisters, sweetheart, I watched you sing, Macy, the power of God was all over you. But I'm telling you right now, this girl has something on her Amen. that can touch young people in this city. Yes. And if we need to bring our kids around her, I'm telling you, it's like she's a, she's got a fire magnet on her. Come on. And I'm telling you, get your kids with her. Amen. She made you say, is she going to teach us something? You're going to learn by watching what she does. Amen. I was in this altar, seeking the face of God. And I watched her up here. I couldn't help but see her when I would walk by, calling out to God, hearing from God, as many of you were. But then in the vision, there was a revival that started off of her. And I know that the Father wants to use her. Immediately after that, the Father took me into a setting where people were receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit with fresh tongues, like you got a different baptism coming. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. The city has a different baptism. Yeah. Yeah. Hang in here with me. Remember... These, this woman are, is about to lose her boys as payment for a right. debt. It takes this kind of desperation. Right. And Jada, this is the kind of desperation that's on you right now. Amen. Sometimes we get so comfortable, mm -hmm. so comfortable that someone else is going to get the word of the Lord. Right. Someone else is going to pray. Someone else will do it. People, we need the desperation. Some of you have work schedules and, and you got to get your kids to bed. You can't stay and do all these things. I'm not talking about that. I'm asking you to invest time to seek in the face of God and get the desperation. Yeah. Yes, amen. It can't just be about let's get in there and see what God does. 
let's come up here and open the heavens right. yes. so that there's someone in the room that comes yes. and doesn't know the hand of God. He's so powerful in the house yes. that they can't deny that God yes. is here. These people knew they had to get a miracle, brother, or they're going to die. Amen. Yes. They had to have a miracle or they're going to die. Brother, that's the kind of attitude. That's the kind of warrior. That's the kind of yes. man. That's the kind of woman. That's the kind of youth group yes. that can change a city. Yes. If you will say, I yes. cannot be in this status quo. Amen. Yes. I can't just come here. Dude, it ain't enough for your mama to lead worship. Right. Come on. It ain't enough because your dad's a pastor. It is not enough because your parents are Christian. Right. It is not enough because somebody else has got the fire. You need your own fire. Yes. Or else it becomes just perfunctory performance. We come up here and sing songs, watch our watch, can't wait to get out, come wait on. for the right minute to leave the place. Brother, if you don't have an empty jar to invest, God can't fill it with oil. Yes. That's right. yes. We need an investment. Yes. What do you mean by that? I mean, get you a time with God and pray. Get you a block out to say, God, give me that block and start praying over it. This is a shut the door kind of faith. It's where you shut everyone else. Verse 5, right. she did what the Lord told her to do. There's nothing in this for this prophet. He doesn't get an offering out of this. He's not here in this instance to take a, make a withdrawal. He's here to leave a deposit. He's here to make an investment. I've come to make an investment in you. They brought her jars and she kept pouring. This is important that you learn this. Mark, she's the only one anointed to pour. Mm -hmm. The boys were anointed to go get jars. Mm -hmm. There are some gifts in the house of God that are called to go get empty jars. Yeah. yeah. You got an anointing. To me, if you didn't have a job right now, I would drive Uber. And it seemed like you would pray for people all stinking night. Yeah. It seemed like you would be like, people would be calling you half drunk, I didn't need a ride. And I'd be praying for people all stinking night long. Amen. I'm talking about giving somebody's empty jar a refill. Yeah. But you got to be carrying oil yes. to give a refill. The sons do the gathering. The mom does the pouring. She just kept pouring. You know why? She had the pouring from nothing kind of faith. This is the kind of faith that says, I don't have enough to do this. The kind of faith that says, I can't afford this. The kind of faith that says, there's not enough in this to take care of all these people. Right. When all the jars were full, she said to him, verse 6, bring me another. And they replied, there's not one jar left. Amen. We broke the broke people. <laughs> we took all the broke jars. Can you imagine these jars? Some of them look like a mason jar. Some of them have a tall blue thing. Over here, a cracked red thing. Somebody over here got a little cut. Somebody over they got all kind of mixture. Man, whatever you can get, go right, get right. something. Glory yeah. be to God to let God fill up. Yes. There's not a jar left. And the oil stopped flowing when the jar stopped yes. showing up. Come on. I'm going to close it with this. Have you stopped pouring when God wanted to keep doing some filling? I have seen too many times ministries reach a plateau, cities reach a place, and they start taking for granted the move of God. And we think, well, it's been going good like this for weeks. But it's going to just always be there. People, we can't take this for granted. I believe that God's heart is focused toward this region right now. I believe there are people catching fire and the whole neighborhood is filled with empty jars. We need one lady with one word, somebody to say, come on, I'm going to take you somewhere and get you filled up. Yes. Can you imagine how this lady must have been? The Bible says, she told him, you take that, pay off your, your creditors and sell the rest and live on it. This lady went from a broke widow 
to a 401 cool. <laughs> In one afternoon, she went from being known as a broke widow to an oil. That's exactly right. She owned the oil on the block. Come on. Yeah. In the time of famine, she paid off her debt right. when no one else had anything. All she got was empty jars, and you right. can always give those back. Right. That's right. Yeah. But God's the God that asks for somebody to bring something yes. to it that Jesus. makes no sense. Would you stand with me, please? I pray you would never get tired, President. I pray you would never get tired pressing in. People, it's so important to keep our hearts right, our lives right. It's so difficult when you can sit around and watch the wicked uh, seem to prosper, but truly what the Lord wants to do. Mm. Truly what the Lord wants to do is turn that wealth of the wicked over to you. I pray for you in Jesus' name. Put all eyes on Jesus, please.